Now to the next story. We're finally going to do it. There's no spoilers here. Le boop. For Interview with the Vampire, mini review. It's not that many. I got a lot to say. Because <laughs> I love this show so much. But don't worry, there are no spoilers because I want you to watch the show. Uh, all right, so where can you watch it? Now, this is an AMC Plus show, or AMC, and that's why hardly anybody has watched the show. However, they recently added it to Netflix, just the first season. So about two weeks ago, I was uh, going through Netflix's Halloween recommendations to add to my watch list. And so they, so I saw that they had Interview with the Vampire. And somebody had said, you know, a, lot, a number of you have been saying, oh, Grace, please watch Interview with the Vampire. It's so good. And I was like, I don't want to go find it. I don't want to watch it. I have enough to do. But since people had recommended it so strongly and I needed something to watch, I was like, and it was on Netflix, you know, this is the Netflix effect. I was like, okay, I'll watch it. It was so good. I binged it like in three days, both seasons, maybe four days, but I binged it like it, certainly in a week. I binged two seasons, and I think they were both eight or nine episodes apiece right away. And the second season wasn't even on Netflix. I had to go buy it on iTunes, on Apple. I had to go buy Interview with the Vampire Season 2 because I wanted to watch it so badly. They were like, give me $20. And I was like, all right. And it was worth it. So great, great, incredible show. But if you have Netflix, you can watch the first season for free, and then you will go buy Season 2 because it's so good. All right, so let's talk. Here is the trio. Here's the movie for comparison. I got to use my arrow here. All right, so here is obviously Tom Cruise's Lestat. I didn't watch the movie. Uh, came out when I was too little. <clears throat> didn't see it. So the story was relatively new for me. Also, even if you've read the novel, they've changed or massaged or added a lot to it. So you can still really enjoy the show. Uh, they really fleshed it out. The first two seasons are actually the entire first book. Uh, so um, everything that's in the movie is actually the two seasons of the show. So this is Lestat, and this, this is Lestat on the show. Here is uh, Brad Pitt as Louis, and here's Jacob Anderson as Louis. And then Kirsten Dunst, this is her big breakout role as Claudia, and then in season one, Bailey Bass played the role. We'll talk about the switch of uh, Claudia's as well. Uh, I don't, I don't want to watch the movie. I'm watching this show. Oh, I forgot to upload season three. I'm talk There's a season three coming out. You might be like, what's the point of watching this? Season three is coming out very soon. They've already started filming it. It's going to be based on the book, The Vampire Lestat. It's going to be phenomenal. They had a teaser at Comic-Con. Go watch it. It's going to be so good. All right, so let's talk about the show. All right, so hold on. Let me get rid of the movie cast. All right, so first we'll talk about the three main actors. All right, so Lestat played by Sam Reed. Let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see him. There he is. Okay. All right, where's my arrow? All right, so here is Sam Reed as Lestat. This is to gothic horror uh, what Anthony Starr is to superheroes with Homelander. It's that level of a performance. It is one of the sexiest, most amazing uh, perform. It is Grey Worm. We'll talk about Grey Worm in a moment. One of the sexiest, most amazing performances I've ever seen. This guy is just, he has it. He has it. He should be a huge star. Uh, he, his line readings, I mean, everybody on the show is incredible. But he is, and by the way, this is an LGBTQ show, but I think it's like Agatha all along. It's not about being LGBTQ. They are LGBTQ characters in a broader story. But it's definitely a romance, and we'll talk about that. It's a romance between Lestat and Louis. What was only alluded to in the movie is fully gone into here. So it's a very sexy show. It's, you know, if you, if you like the beefcake, it's got the beefcake here. Uh, it's actually a very beautiful story, particularly when you watch the two seasons together, and we'll talk about that. It's actually an incredibly moving story. But this guy, Sam Reed... I can't say enough good things about him. I truly believe he's at the level, level of Anthony Starr's uh, um, uh, Homelander. How steamy is it, Zay? It's very steamy. It's as steamy as Game of Thrones. Uh, I would say also, by the way, this show is on par with Game of Thrones and Shogun in terms of what I was really impressed with was the production design and the scope of the show. 
uh, showing early century New Orleans, uh, 19, early 20th century New Orleans, like early 1900s. I was really, really impressed with that. There's no full frontal on the show, I don't think. I don't think there is. But it's I got a lot of, you know, very a lot of allusion to that, a lot of, you know, a lot of sex scenes. It's very sexy. All right, so, but yes, uh, it's incredible, incredible show. And, you know, uh, the third, uh, I'm glad you're watching it, Xavier Ramos. Yeah, it's not NC-17, it's very hard R. It's as far as probably an R could get. Uh, a lot of, also very bloody, very bloody, very gory show because it's a vampire show. All right, so I absolutely adore uh, him. I think he's wonderful on the show. Huge, huge fan. Um, I can't believe that Hollywood hasn't scooped him up. All right. All right. So I want to be able to see who we're talking about here. All right. So the next person I want to talk about is this actor, Jacob Anderson, Grey Worm from Game of Thrones. That's him as Louis. Now they race-bended the role, I think, very effectively. Very, very effectively, particularly when talking about that time period. And it's also fascinating when you think because they're eternal to see how Louis's journey changes through the centuries, you know, as you know, the, you know, racism to some degree is becomes a, a you know a, a better situation. You know, I, I think the passage of time becomes even more interesting to see when it's from the perspective of somebody who is dealing with that those elements. So I think that I think it was a brilliant change to the novels. Also, I read what the original novel entailed, and you just couldn't do that today with how they you know they it was pretty bad. You just couldn't do that. But uh, he, is, he is like the more, you know, uh, Lestat is a very flamboyant character, uh, whereas Louis is more reserved. Uh, you can see him open up a little bit through the centuries, through the decades, um, which is also fascinating to see. But I can't believe how good Jacob Anderson's performance is. You can't, you know, it's a balancing act. I would actually liken them to Anthony Starr and Carl Urban as Butcher and Homelander in The Boys in terms of a really important duality. That, to me, is, is crucial. So I really like that. Yes, they're both vampires. Um, Lestat turns Louis. That's the setup. So I think that's fantastic. I think it was just really, really well done. Then, as for Claudia, now they cast an older actress than is uh, indicated in the book and that Kirsten Dunst played in the original uh, movie. She's supposed to be like 12, but obviously you can see late teens or early 20s playing late teens. Now that's Bailey Bass in season one. Uh, she, of course, would go on to play um, uh, in, in, what was it, in uh, Avatar. In Avatar, wonderful job in, this, in the Avatar sequel. So she wasn't available for season two. And in fact, when I loaded season two onto my Apple TV, I saw this actress in the, in the photo, and I was like, who the heck is that? This is an actress named Delaney Hales, uh, who took over the role of Claudia when they went to Europe in season two. And I was a little disappointed because Bailey Bass was so incredible in season one. Uh, you know, the, the mood swings of a teenager, but heightened by a vampire, is an incredible idea, and really, really, really explored here quite well. But I have to tell you, by the end of season two, I was a huge Delaney Hales fan. I think both these actresses are phenomenal. It's almost like when they switched the Darrens on Bewitched and nobody realized. Uh, I think that obviously you do realize, but I think that the performances fit together beautifully. I think they cast actresses that look very similar to each other, uh, not only facially, but even in their physical builds. And I think that it works. You know, I took me one episode to get used to it. I think particularly because the actresses are both so good. Uh, also, the story is incredible. I just, it's just phenomenal. Phenomenal, phenomenal story. Em, you got to watch this show. It's so good. Uh, then also there are some other characters on the show that I just want to point out. There's one huge character that I don't want to give away. So we're not going to discuss them because it was a pretty good reveal. Uh, so I don't want to ruin that. So we're not going to, you might be like, why are we discussing that character? That's why. All right. So, um, uh, who is this? Let me make this so you can see here. All right. So yes, Eric Bogosian is on this show. Here he is here. He plays the interviewer, Daniel Malloy. This was the Christian Bale character in the movie. Uh, he's phenomenal. 
the surprises with this character were such a treat through season two. I can't tell you how good it was. Eric Bogosian did a really, really good job. And they made the Daniel Malloy character phenomenal. What they were able to do with the interviewer, I was really, really blown away with how strong it was. And for D Eric Bogosian, this late in his career, to get such a juicy role is really, really surprising. It's, very, it's just really nice for him. Uh, so here he is with the season one cast. Okay, uh, they have these, this cast has some great interviews on YouTube, by the way, which are recommended to me. I watched a few of them, and now they're like, "Would you like to say some more?" And I'm like, "I've watched so many already." All right, I said Christian. Oh, did I say Christian Bale? I'm sorry, Christian Slater. I meant Christian Slater. I don't know why I said Christian Bale. I'm having a little issue with allergies today. It's making me a little bit uh, off. Sorry. All right, so yes, that's right, Mary. The Eric Bogosi and Daniel Malloy role is only going to get better. But no spoilers! Don't ruin it! All right, then there's another character that I wanted to point out from season two, Santiago. Sorry, Claudia. All right, this is Santiago. All right, he's in season two. This is Ben Daniels playing the role. I'm a Ben Daniels fan, actually. He's delicious. So delicious in this role. I can't tell you how good he is. Uh, let me give you a little context, a slight spoiler. He is the lead vampire actor in the theater company in France. Oh, so amazing. Uh, and he is a vampire. Some of the vampires can fly. But obviously they don't want uh, the audience of humans to know that, so he pretends to have a rigging around him. But he, it's not a rigging. He's actually flying around the theater. Uh, but I like the way that it's tied like a noose. Uh, he's such an evil character. I mean, wow. Shocking how evil he was on the show. But I loved it. It was great. All right, so that's the cast. Now I want to talk a little bit about the show, just in context, okay? Because I said this was a mini review. Don't worry, no spoilers. No spoilers. All right, so hold on. So that's the main cast, though. All right, so season one was really a toxic love story, and it takes place almost entirely in New Orleans, and I thought it was really beautiful, dealing with not only uh, that era in New Orleans and vampires, uh, but, you know, what it was like to not only be a person of color at that time period, but also a member of the LGBTQ community at that time period. New Orleans in America was probably... Um, you know, the most, not only one of the most European cities in, in America, but probably the most open city that existed at that time, uh, but not that open. But if you were either of those in either of those groups, much less in both of them, which Louis is, New Orleans was obviously the place that you could only have even the slightest hope of being. And, you know, and that's one of the reasons that I think he is willing to become a vampire, because he just has so few options. Uh, which is really fascinating. There are other elements as well. Um, so it was really phenomenal. Uh, so season one is very much about, you know, that, that, that you know, and, how, and Claudia's origin story as well. It's really the origin stories of Louis and Claudia and how they interact with Lestat. Uh, now, and it has a very chaotic, shocking ending, and I don't want to give it away. Uh, but season two, uh, here's the poster for season two, which is incredible. Um, season two is the trial. If any of you are familiar with the original movie or, uh, or, the, uh, or the novel. Uh, and it's really stunning. Uh, I was shocked at how sad season two was. Season two was one of, especially the last two episodes, I had tears streaming down my face. I felt bad for everybody. It was just so tragic. It was just incredible. And it really is a package. I think that both seasons are very good. But they really are a set. You can't really get the full effect of the story unless you watch both of them because it reflects so heavily. Season two, season two reflects so heavily on season one. I'm not giving away anything. Don't give anything away. All right. But even if you do know some of the things, it's okay because they happen in a different way or also the way they're done are so powerful that it's quite shocking. Some of the imagery here I will never forget what I saw. And that's intentional. Kudos to the team here, from the actors to the writers to the directors to the everybody. Um, so toxic relationships. That's one of the things that's most interesting. I would say that Lestat and Louie have a Joker-Harley kind of situation, very much that kind of dynamic. 
But it's all, but there's, there is actual love there, which is what's so fascinating about it. Uh, and that it's not just toxicity. It's not someone, it's not like cut and dry. This person's using this person and lied to them. You know, it's a little, it reminds me a little bit of Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. Uh, the Harley is Lestat. You know, he's not as, he doesn't have the flourish of Harley, but you know, um, that's funny that some of you would say that Louie was the Joker. You know, that's what's so fascinating about the show, that by the time you're done with season two, you're not sure who's the Joker and who's the Harley. And that's why I wanted to also talk about memory and perspective. Louie, through the course of the show, realizes that he's remembering a number of things incorrectly. And that is very shocking to you as a viewer, because for the first season and the first half of season two, you're all on Louie's side. You're like, that the stat's a horrible person. I'm glad you got away from him. But as the show, because it's very sophisticated, as the show progresses and you start to see more of Louis so uh, Lestat's side, and Louis starts, yes, an unreliable narrator. But that's the point. The point they're trying to make is that you're an unreliable narrator of your own memories and, and your own experiences, because it's only your perspective. And I think that's shocking. And as Louis starts to realize that maybe he was cruel to Lestat, you're like, oh my God, you know? Uh, that's just really, really amazing to, to see. I'm not spoiling Art Lover, I'm just talking about it in context. But when you watch that, I think you'll be really amazed as to how it goes. Uh, also, I loved the vampire lore, uh, which they're gonna get even more to in season three. I loved the vampire powers, I loved, um, you know, the vampire hierarchy. Uh, I thought that was all very interesting. And also, they did a lot building out modern the modern vampire situation, which I do not believe is in the novel. So they're very much setting up, you know, all these time periods, uh, but also even what it's like for vampires today, who are largely, you know, uh, it's not a spoiler because it's revealed immediately, Louis in the present lives in Dubai which is also very interesting. That's a really fascinating choice. Uh, really beautiful cinematography. So I just really can't recommend this show strongly enough. I think it's an incredible show. Uh, and season three, let me bring in the season three photo. You gotta see it. Okay, where'd it go? Season three, season three. The stat teaser, that's what I'm looking for. There it is. Okay, this was at Comic-Con this year. There he is. All right, so uh, Cuz Interview with the Vampire was a, a series of interviews with Louis. Here, Lestat is a, a rock star, just like in the novel. Just like in the novel, the vampire Lestat becomes a, a rock star. And so they're doing video interviews, like they do for MTV and reality TV, where he does these interstitial interviews. And that's what the teaser trailer is, Lestat's, some of his interviews. And it's really cool. A lot of Sam Reed. He's incredible. Let me just give you a nice big picture of that. It just looks really cool. It just looks really, really good. And so this is a teaser that you can watch uh, right now. And Daniel Malloy is doing the interviews. Uh, Eric Bogosian's character. He can sing, Mary. Oh, hey, Mary, are you the one that tweeted me? He can sing. He's an, actually an incredible singer. They released the first song, actually. And Sam Reed, who I believe is Australian, is singing in a French accent in English. It's incredible. The top right photo is your fave? Yeah, his emotions. I gotta tell you, they're all good at crying, but Sam Reed is a really good crier. Is it as good as True Blood? Yes, it is definitely as good as True Blood. I really, really think it's even better because it has the period piece aspect to it. Again, I put it up there with Game of Thrones and Shogun. I think it's that good a show. Uh, Rippy says, do you have any specific favorite episodes? Season two, episode five and seven were two of the best TV I've ever seen. Yeah, the trial, the trial in season two is just, I agree. You just really, you can't get better than that. But I thought that the uh, Mardi Gras party at the end of season one was also pretty incredible. I mean, it's, is it, I wouldn't say it's better than The Boys, Marco. I think it's as good as The Boys. It's goth horror. It's goth horror, whereas, I think it's as good as The Boys. I mean, I am all in on this show. I will probably try to review season three. I think it's one of the best things I've ever seen. And I can see why so many of you are saying, you gotta watch this show, Grace, and I feel bad. This is yet another show that has slipped through the cracks. You know, because of the service that it's on.
I mean, I just, it's incredible. That's right, Tyler. You tried to tell me. I'm glad I finally watched it. Uh, Green Lantern's like this. This, this falls in line with Queen of the Damned. Um, I haven't watched that movie. Uh, I do know, I think they are going to explore Lestat's mother and stuff in this upcoming show, uh, which is going to be really interesting. Uh, so there's a lot of good stuff coming up. I, they're doing some other Anne Rice stuff on AMC, but that stuff like the Mayfair Witches or something has horrible ratings. So I didn't even try to watch that. I'm glad I got you to watch this, Steve. Like part of me was like, maybe I should go watch the other stuff that they have over there because I want more. But I was like, ah, oh, the rating, the reviews are bad. I'm just going to wait for, I'm just going to wait for the third season of this. Uh, Jander says, never liked the film, but decided to give the show a chance to not regret it. Yeah, I'm telling you, it can't, it's up there. It's as good as The Boys. It's as good as Shogun. It's as good as, I think it's a little better than Fallout. It's as good as Game of Thrones. I mean, it's just, it's an incredible show. They spend the money when they need to for the VFX. Uh, they have really amazing set design. It's really strong writing. It's really emotional. It's fa It's really interesting. Uh, Lloyd, I don't know why it doesn't have the Emmys. I think maybe because it's so genre-y. And I think, you know, AMC for a while, it's shocking to me that AMC was able to do such a good job with um, Walking Dead, but cannot launch this show. That's right, Matt Torres. I'm saying it's good. <laughs> if you couldn't tell. If you couldn't tell... I liked the show. And it's a great time of year to watch it because it's Halloween. You know, Michaela, you are the third person to mention From to me, which is also on MGM Plus, I think. And everybody's saying From is an incredible show. From, F-R-O-M. And that's on uh, MGM Plus. And everybody's telling me it's amazing. So maybe I'll check that out as well. Oh, yeah, AMC also did Mad Men. It's shocking that AMC has such a strong history in terms of shows, but yet have not been able to do justice to this show. All right, I think we can go to the Q&A section. All right. So I have spread the word. I know a number of you wanted me to watch this show so I could help spread the word, and I'm so happy now that I can do it. So let's, let's, get, let's get us enough uh, interview with the vampire fans so that when season three comes out, we can, it can, really, we can really go nuts. Uh, that's right, Michaela. Uh, Breaking Bad also was on AMC. My pleasure, Mary. I'm sorry it took me so long. All right, Q&A section. 